In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigilant prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. If we honor the memory of His death and resurrection by hearing His words and celebrating His mystery, then we may be confident that we shall share in the victory over death and live with Him forever. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. To Him be glory forever and ever. Amen. By His holy wounds, May Christ our Lord guard us and keep us Amen. May Christ, the light of Christ, ray, rise in the morning, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Christ our light, thanks be to God. Christ our light, thanks be to God. Christ our light, Thanks be to God. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen, sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in brightness of your King, Christ has conquered. Glory fills you, darkness vanish forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, 
exalting glory, there is in Savior shine upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of God's people. My dearest friend, standing with me in this holy light, join me in asking God for mercy, that he may give his unworthy minister grace to sing the Easter praises. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that with full hearts and minds and voices we should praise the unseen God, the all-powerful Father, of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has ransomed us with his blood and pay for us the price of Adam's sin to our eternal Father. This is our Passover feast when Christ did through lamp his slain, whose blood consecrate the homes of all believers. This is the night when first you saved our fathers. You freed the people of Israel from their slavery and let them dry trot through the Red Sea. This is the night when the pillar of fire destroyed the darkness of sin. This is the night when Christians everywhere washed clean of sin and free from all defied men. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chain of death and rose triumphantly from the grave. What good would life have been to us has Christ not come to be our Redeemer? Father, how beautiful your care for us, how boundless your merciful love to rent him a slave you gave away your son. O happy fault, O necessary sin of Adam, which gained for us a great Redeemer. Most blessed of all night chosen by God to see Christ rising from the dead. On this night, scriptures say, the night will be as clear as day, it will become my light, my joy. The power of this holy night, dispel all evil, wash guilt away. Restore holy innocence, bring mourner joy. It cast not out hate, bring peace, and humble earthly pride. Night truly blessed when heaven is wedded to earth, and man is reconciled with God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, receive our evening sacrifice of praise, your church solemnly offering. Accept this Easter candle, a flame divided but undeemed, a pillar of fire that glows to the honor of God. Let it mingle with the lights of heaven, and continue bravely burning to dispel the darkness of this night. May the morning star which never set find this flame still burning, Christ the morning star who came back from the dead and is shed in his peace on all mankind, your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now we begin the most beautiful part, which is the part of the readings, and we are going to read number one, number three, and number seven of the readings. And this is the Vigil of Easter. Dear brethren, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. 
Let us meditate on how God in time past saved his people, and in these last days he sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. The first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was the formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above from the above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky, and shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day, and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly above beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teams and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created them. 
male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean, as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains the water stood. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. You send forth springs into the watercourses that wind among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You water the mountains from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise cattle grass for the cattle, and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the word creation in the beginning, except that at the end of age, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now we go to the third reading, and this is very important, and the church wants us to read it, this one, because the, epi the uh, episode that we are going to read is what we are celebrating today, the Passover of our faith, that Jesus Christ now, by this Passover of the Jews, become our Passover. In reading from the book of Exodus, the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them, that I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading 
Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming in closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to the right, to their right, and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea, when the Lord hurled them into the into its mist. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and behold, the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians. They feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang the song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot is cast into the sea. The Lord of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God. I praise him, the God of my Father, I exalt him. Let us sing to the Lord, he is covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them, they sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power, your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat. O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undeemed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution, by the power of your right hand, 
now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we go to the last lesson, which is number seven. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, I defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they had poured out on the ground, and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will provide the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like a deer that long for long longing streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Like a deer that long for running streams, my soul longs for you, O God. I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, amid loud cries of joy and thanksgiving, with the multitude keeping festival. Like a deer that long for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Like a deer that long for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. I give you thanks upon the harp, O oh God, my God. Like a deer that long for running streams, my soul long for you, my God. Let us pray.
O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is risen up, and what has become old is made new, and all things are restored to the integrity through Christ, just as by him they come into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This is the moment we have been waiting for, when we sing the Gloria for the first time after seven weeks silence from the Gloria, the church lights the candles of the ortel, and then of course we sing the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, holy begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render your undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We have the reading of the Mass now. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to, to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. 
Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, another expression that we have silenced during Lent for seven weeks. And for the first time now, we sing the Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Daphne Mulei Albi Fomi, Bishin Shandar Gifisher, Levangelium Adesir, Lissem Tal Messier, Talibeno Tal Spiritus Santo Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was drawn, Mary of Magdala and her mother Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descend from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaking with fear of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciple, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. <clears throat> then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers in Galilee that they, that they are there, they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today we are not making an anniversary. We are not commemorating an event. Today we are announcing to the world that Jesus, that we walked with him during this week, is the one who is risen from the dead. Today in the vigil we read from the book of the, of the Genesis, the Exodus, and Ezekiel and the Romans. And we see that in the first reading we see how God, because He loves so much, He creates. And He creates so that all creation will give you praise. And in order that this praise will be given, He creates the human beings. So that they, in, their, in the image of Himself He created them, they will have a relationship with Him. And we see that every time that God creates, whether the sea, the sky, the fish, the, the bird, everything he saw, it was good. 
because what God creates is good. But then we know that man has went against the will of God. And the Redeemer needs to be sent. And that Redeemer was planned to be the Son of the Eternal Father. We heard in the Exodus how Moses, after he pleaded with Pharaoh to let the people go, and he refused, and finally, after the death of his older son, the people were chased out of Egypt and sent them away. And we know that at the cr crossing of the sea, they were afraid, because how they are going to, cro to cl uh, cross it, with all their children, with all their cattle and everything. And so God pleads with God, with God and said to him that you are going to go very early in the morning with your people across the sea. And we know that the sea was lowered so that the chosen people will go through the sea. And when they arrive at the other bank, we know that the Egyptians changed their minds and chased them. And they were drowned all in the sea according to what God said to Moses to touch the water again and he will destroy all the charioteers and all the horses and all the soldiers of the Pharaoh. We hear about Ezekiel how now God although the chosen people of God again sinned against him and went again to the second exile in Babylon how he is going to retrieve them how he's going to bring them back home. He is going to bring them back home so that he will unite them again as a nation and he will be their God, and they will be his people, and they will now begin to believe in him and live his covenant. We hear today how the Magdala and the other women went to the tomb. Remember, that was, was not, um, um, they cannot prepare the body for burial on Friday because it was not, um, it was not awful to do so. So they wrapped the body, and then they decided to go early in the morning after the, after the Passover and they will clean the body and perfume him so that he will be ready for burial. But while they are going, they saw that the stone was already removed from the, from the tomb. And we know that Jesus also endured and encountered them and said to them, as the angel already told them, go and tell my brothers they will see me in Galilee. Today we see the tomb empty. Remember what we read on Friday, that Joseph of Arimathea has given Jesus the tomb that no one has been placed in. He put it for himself. And now the tomb is empty. From darkness come light. From death comes, comes life. This is what Jesus did. He comes from the tomb. As Pope Benedict XVI said to us, the tomb speak to us, speak to us of his emptiness, because now Jesus is risen. Today we celebrate the great event of our, of our fate, when that Christ, who was designed by God to suffer and to die on the cross, is the one who was buried, but also is the one that we proclaim him, he is alive. And this is not just because Jesus encountered the woman and tell the, uh, to, the, to the angels to go because he will see them in Galilee because Jesus appeared many times to the apostles. He appeared to them on the Easter Sunday night. He appeared to them at the, Tiber at the, at the Sea of Tiberias. He appeared with them when, when um, uh, one of the disciples was not with them, Thomas. He appeared with them in many times, many occasions. And now he appeared with them also and ate with them and so now Jesus is not, a, is not a ghost. He is somebody real. And that is why the apostles, from people who are shaken with fear and shaken with doubt, they begin to understand that this Jesus is real. He not just spoken to them that he is going to rise, but he actually risen from the dead. And this resurrection is our salvation. Right now I bring to my, to my, to my thoughts the churches filled with people on this beautiful night and also tomorrow. Many people wear their best clothes for Easter, for Easter Sunday morning. And we know that today, this year, 2020, we cannot do this. 
but don't be afraid because our churches also will be full of joy and joy more deep than we have before because now we know what it is to have to have not and so when we gather together we come together to give glory to God to give God thanks for all he has done for us that he has prevented us from this virus from this dangerous weapon that is among us and now he has given us hope again to live this is what really the hope of the resurrection is all about Jesus has to go to the cross he has to die but the outcome of his death is the resurrection and so is our joy the joy that we receive on this Easter is a joy that is going to be not based on sentimental hope but reality because we believe that Jesus the son of the eternal father who died for us on the cross is truly risen and because he is risen today we rejoice because his resurrection is also our joy because that joy is that we now are heirs again by his sacrifice to the eternal heavens Jesus risen from the dead is the masterpiece or it is the it is the most important action of the apostles all of them the apostles died a martyr's death and why they die a martyr is that just to proclaim that Jesus died and Jesus is risen. That is why the apostles died and shed their blood. Do you think that somebody is going to go and die for some, for some uh, fantasy or for some story? The apostles understand that this is the core lesson of each one of us. That if we die with Christ, we also rise with him, as St. Paul said to us in the Romans. If we have died with Christ, we die with Christ in the waters of baptism. And we rise with Christ from that water of baptism to be a new creation. And that new creation is that we now are called children of God. And indeed, we are heirs of the kingdom because Jesus has paid for our sinfulness. Jesus has paid for our price. And so today we rejoice, dear people. Although you are at, at your homes and away from church, from the sacraments, don't disillude yourself. The day is coming and soon will be here when we will be again rejoicing again and receiving communion, receiving Jesus in the Eucharist, which is really what the uh, feast of today is all about. Is the breaking of the bread. Is when Jesus come in the midst of the apostles to give them that shalom, that peace, and also break bread with them. As he said to them, I will not drink again from this cup till I enter the kingdom of my Father. And this is the kingdom. He rose from the dead so that he instructed the disciples and he will go back to the Father. And from the right hand of the Father, he continued to intercede for the church. Over 2,000 years has passed. And this feast is like actual today. Because the action of Jesus is not yesterday, is not tomorrow, is today. The action of Jesus is always actual. And because he is, he is with us, we continue to celebrate his great gift to us. The gift of life, the gift of peace, the gift of grace, the gift that he gives us of taking away our fears away from us. May this a time in our history in our time that we are going through and sometimes can be a fearful time may God bless us give us that hope and give us the strength that we need so this Jesus that today we are separated from him for a while from the receiving of the sacraments we come together soon to rejoice with him because this is the hope of every believer that the Christ who died and rose again if we believe in him, we too, who die to our sinfulness in the waters of baptism, will rise with him, not only to live on the face of the earth, but to live forever in the eternal happiness he prepared for us. God bless you. Due to the fact that we have no attendance of people, there is no baptisms and there is no chrism, uh, uh, chrism will be given to the uh, 
we anoint the, 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 the one who are going to be um, in the, preparing for this day. So we go back, we go now to the blessing of the, uh, of the water. Almighty ever-living God, be present by the mystery of the great love, and send for the spirit of adoption to create a, a new people brought to birth to you from the fountain of baptism. O God, who by invisible power accomplish wonder effect to the sacramental signs, who are in this, in this way has prepared water, your creation, to show forth the, the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moment of the world creation hover over the water so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed the regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come to an end to the vice and the beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shot through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son was baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from the side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples to go forth Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now upon your face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive the Holy Spirit, the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from the, from the old become new may be found worthy to rise to life of the newly born children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down upon the world, up, uh, down through your Son into the fullness of this fund, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism in death may rise again to life with Him, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now this is the most important part of each one of us when we are going to profess our faith. Today we don't say the creed, but we are going to profess the baptismal vows. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him to a newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promise of our holy baptism, by which we renounce Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, and for six times you respond, I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. All his works? I do. All his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, died, and was buried? rose again from the dead, and the see the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church.
I saw water coming from the right side of the temple. And to whom this water arrived, they will cry with us, Alleluia, Alleluia. And may Almighty God, the Father of all Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now we have the prayer of the faithful. Filled with joy of Christ's resurrection, we turn now to our loving God with our needs and the needs of the world. For God's holy church, that through our word and action, we may constantly testify to God's unconditioned gift of salvation to the whole world. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, that they may use their power to bring justice and mercy to those who have been afforded no power for themselves. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those that later on uh, during the year we are going to, they are going to be united in the church. I am talking about those who are going to be baptized and receive in the full communion with the church. That the Lord may always bless them and give them the courage. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are discouraged and beware of hope that God may be with them and give them a new heart and place with them a new spirit especially those who are attacked by this virus, coronavirus, and also those who have died, those who are in hospital, those who care for them, doctors, nurses, and aides, and all those who really uh, give their help in helping our community, whether with food or medicine, whatever they do, that the Lord may bless them. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered together in this night, that we no longer be entombed by sin and death, but risen to a new life in Christ Jesus. We pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for all our intention. At this time, I will remember all those that by cart or by word, I promise them to remember them at this Mass of Easter. Glorious Father, you raise your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, winning us for us our salvation. Renew in us our wonder and joy in all that you have done for us. Hear the prayers we make tonight and always, and grant them in the name of your risen Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we continue with the third part, which is the Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we acceptable by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight be pleasing to you, Lord God.
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and ever will be. Lord, push away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his church. Accept, we ask, O, o Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal mystery may, by working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. By dying he destroy our death. By rising restore our life. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy. Every land, every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly power with angelic host. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory. As they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, to unite, and govern her through the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all those who hold and teach the truth, hand on to the Catholic and the Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. We pray for the living. And all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and truth. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whom memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sistus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysostom, John and Borgosma and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defeated, defended by your protection and help. Therefore, Lord, we pray 
graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family order our days in peace and command that we may deliver from an eternal damnation and count among the flock you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation which we make to you, also for those to whom we have been pleased to give a new birth of water and the Holy Spirit. Grant them forgiveness of their sins, order our days in peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, to acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he suffered, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes looked at the heavens, to you, O God, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks. He gave the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving thanks to you, he said the blessing, gave it the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, the, the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we your people and your holy and your holy servants offer to you this glorious mystery, the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindness countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty Father, command that these gifts would be borne by the, by the hands of the holy angels to your high order in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at this order, receive the most body and blood of your Son, be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servant. We remember those who passed away, especially our loved ones. And again, I, pr I pray for my benefactors. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. For us also your servant, who though we are sinners, Hope in your abandoned mercy. Graciously grant some share in the fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, 
Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicita, Perpetuo, Agatha, Lucia, Agnese, Cecilia, Anastasia, Katarina, George Preca, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into that company, not weighing our merit, but grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow upon them, upon us. Per ipsum et in ipso et in ipso, est ibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate spirito ossa hancti, omnisonor et gloria, per omnia secula seculo.